Okay, so good morning once again. And you know, today is a special day. It's not a special day because, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jesus resurrected this morning. It's a special day because we celebrate what our Lord has done more than 2,000 years ago. Right? So I, 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 I want to go into scripture to see what the word of God tells us. Now I want to also tell you that I'm not going to talk about e the story of Easter because everybody knows the story of Easter. Everybody knows what happened on Easter or Resurrection Day as we call it. But I want you to understand one of the aspects of Resurrection Sunday is resting and worshipping in the Lord. Resting in the Lord and worshipping the Lord. And in order for us to understand what is the rest and what it means to, 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 to rest in the Lord and to worship the Lord, we need to go back to the very beginning. We need to go back to the story of creation because the story of creation, in the story of creation, we see the creation of a day for rest and worship. So this is important because as Christians, as believers, as faithful believers of Jesus Christ, we need to know what it means to rest in the Lord. Many times we talk about resting in the Lord, but we do not know what is resting in the Lord. We are resting in ourselves. But today, I pray that as the Holy Spirit has led us to come to this part of Scripture, that you and I will begin to see the importance of resting in the Lord. You and I will see the importance of coming together as a church on a day of rest to worship Him. And to praise him and leaving the world aside turn with me to Genesis chapter 2 you know I know we are doing a series we were all oh, before the Holy Week we were doing a series on Genesis on the story of creation and you know God is good we started uh, teaching on Genesis in January just after our New Year's service and today on Resurrection Sunday, we are talking about the rest. Rest and worshipping. A day of rest and worshipping. Alright, Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. This is what it says. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and, the, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, because it was about two weeks ago that I, the last time when we saw how the earth was created. So I want to give you some points. Or I want to just refresh your memory on what we are talking about. Now I want you to remember in the story of creation, I want you to remember what the earth looked like when God first hung it in space. It was unshaped, it was unformed, it was undeveloped, it was unfinished. God's great plan of creation was to create the world in stages. There were to be seven great days of creation. Seven great days. Hanging there in space, the whole earth was covered with an ocean of water. Turbulent waves, surging, raging waters covered the primeval earth. There was also a heavy mist hanging over the whole earth. A, a, a ring of dense fog and thick clouds rising several thousand feet up and circled the earth. The sun, 
the sun which carries all the light or which gives all light was blocked off from reaching the earth. The earth was engulfed in a blanket of pitch black darkness. But God had a great plan to remedy the situation. A plan that was going to create the earth in stages. A plan which is known as the seven days of creation. And we have already looked earlier, we have already looked at the first six days. Now, on the first day in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 to 5, we see God created light. On the second day, God created the firmament, the atmosphere and the air space above the earth. We see that in Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. On the third day, God created the waters, the dry land. And, 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 and vegetation, Genesis chapter 1, verse 9 to 13. On the fourth day, God distributed light upon the earth to regulate day and night and the seasons and years. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 to 19. On the fifth day, God created water and air creatures. Genesis chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. On the sixth day, during the first half of the day, God created land animals. Genesis chapter 1, verse 24 to 25. And on the sixth day, during the second half of the day, God created man, male and female. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 31. Now, there is an important or a crucial question that everybody asks, why would God choose to create the world in stages? Why did God create the world in seven days? Why didn't he just create it all at once? Well, the seven days of creation tells us, right? The seven days of creation tells us, God intended man to measure time by days and weeks. God intended man to take one day a week, the seventh day, for rest and worship. Therefore, God launched time. He began time, right along with his creative acts. All earthly activity was to be measured by days and weeks. And man was to take one of the seven days, the seventh day, to rest and worship. This is the reason God did not create the world in one moment of time. This is one of the reasons why God created the earth in stages, in seven days. And now we come to the final day of creation, the seventh day. Creation of a day of rest, creation of a day of worship. Let's look at verse 1 of Genesis chapter 2 again. It says that thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Now I want you to take note that God finished the creation of the heavens and the earth. Finished. The Hebrew word reads, and finished were the heavens and the earth. The word finished is stressed. That means creation is completed. God has now completed his plan of creation. The word finished means both completed and perfected. Creation was now completed and the product was perfected. The universe had begun. The universe had begun with an idea in God's mind. God had, had set out to bring his idea of the world into being. He had created it step by step. And now God had created all the basic elements of the universe. All the atoms, the protons, the neutrons, the electrons. Whatever the most basic substance is that makes up matter. God had created all matter, all energy within the universe. The creation of matter and energy was both finished and it was perfected. 
God had now organized all matter and energy to form the heavens and the earth. The arrangement and the organization was now finished. God had now created everything that was necessary to maintain life upon earth. Light, air, water, dry land, vegetation, day and night, seasons and years had all been completed. God's plan of creation was now finished. It was completed. It was perfected. And this is strongly emphasized in this verse. Note the phrase, all the host of them. This is a military picture. The idea is that all the host of creation was now, were now finished and it was perfected. All the atoms and elements, all the matter and energy, all the gases and chemicals, all the stars and planets, all the life, uh, plant lives and vegetation, all the host of creation had now been commanded and ordered, arranged and organized, marshaled and placed where they belong. The innumerable host of creation had been finished. It had been completed. It had been perfected just as God willed. I want you to take note of this. God finished, God completed, and God perfected all the works of creation. God always completes. God always perfects what he begins. Therefore, God will complete and God will perfect the work of salvation within the life of every believer until the glorious day of redemption. He is not finished with you as yet, my friends, because he will complete and perfect the, 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 the work of salvation within your life until that glorious day of redemption. You know, in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 2. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2. And he says that, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. God rested on the seventh day from all his work. God rested. The first point I want to make is this. I want you to take note of the word ended. The word ended. In the Hebrew, it means to declare an end to. To declare finished. The idea is that God declared his work of creation to be finished. I want you to think about this. The rejoicing of God the rejoicing of the Christ, the rejoicing of the Holy Spirit, the rejoicing of the heavenly hosts of angelic beings must have been one of the most spectacular events ever witnessed in all of eternity. Imagine that. God's declaration that the creation of the universe was now completed must have, stir must have stirred up excitement as much excitement, praise, and worship as has ever been witnessed in all annals of eternity. Secondly, the word rested. The word rested there in the Hebrew, Shabbat. It means to stop or to cease from working. The idea is not that God rested from all work after creation. God did not go to sleep. He did not take a pillow and go to sleep. Right? God does not need rest like man. 
like man needs rest god doesn't need rest god was not tired he was not burdened he was not pressured he was not exhausted from his work in creation now we see in verse 2 it clearly tells us what god rested or stopped doing he rested from all his work which he had made or created the word work in the hebrew means a special work a very special job a very special task the special work or task undertaken by god was creation therefore the work that god rested from was the work of creation now the meaning of this can be stated in several ways right firstly we can say that god had finished his creative work therefore he rested ceased from his creative work we can also say that he had completed the work which he had just been doing the work of creation therefore he rested he ceased from the work of creation we can also say that god had hand ended god had ended the special work which he had set out to do therefore he rested ceased from that special work or we can also say that god had completed and perfected his work of creation therefore he stepped aside with a sense of quiet peace and accomplishment over his creative work the point that i'm trying to make is this my friends god did not rest or cease from working he only rested and ceased from the work that he had been doing that week his work for that week the week the the the, the work of creation was completed the rest of god i want you to take note today the rest of god was not inactivity the rest of god was not idleness the rest of god was not laziness the rest of god was not slumber the rest of god was not slackness the the the, the rest of god was not shirking duties isaiah 40 was 28 Isaiah 40 verse 28 says has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding the rest of god was a sense of quiet peace an accomplishment over the creative work he had just completed the picture that scripture gives us is descriptive god took a day the seventh day to stand back and enjoy his creative work no doubt all the heavenly host joined in his celebration in his declar- declaration that the work of creation the six days of creation was now completed the seventh day of god's rest the rest of god is an inner sense it's a inner sense of peace of accomplishment of fulfillment of satisfaction it is it is completeness success purpose meaning assurance confidence approval and security god was very pleased with his work standing there on the seventh day he felt that he had done a very good job god had a deep sense of peace he had a deep sense of satisfaction and accomplishment he was at rest with what he had done men today men is to follow the example of god man is to take man is to 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 take or set aside a day when he rests from his labor but throughout the week man must also labor even as god labored diligently and faithfully man should be able to do as god did stand on his day of rest look back over the previous week and have a deep sense of accomplishment You and I should be able to feel like we have done 
that we have done a good job. We must be able to feel satisfied and fulfilled because we have worked diligently. We should be able to feel purpose because we have contributed to meet the needs of people, to meet the needs of society, to make the world a better place to live. But the great tragedy is this. Few people have this rest of God. And what is the rest of God? The rest of God is the rest of fulfillment, the rest of satisfaction, the rest of purpose in life. Too few work diligently upon the job. Too few do all they can to meet the needs of people and of society. Most just routinely do their job. Use as little energy and as little effort as possible. And selfishly do as little work as possible. The world today calls it working smart. Matthew 25 verse 23. Jesus said this. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. In 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2. The Apostle Paul says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. A man be found faithful. Verse 3 of Genesis chapter 2. It says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. God blessed the seventh day. He set, up, he set it apart as holy. Now, I want you to note how clearly, beyond any question, God sets the seventh day apart. Right? Genesis 2 verse 3 says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So there can be no question about what God is doing with the seventh day. God is setting the day apart from all other days of the week. Four significant things show this. Firstly, scripture says God blessed the seventh day. Note, it is the day itself that is blessed. No other day was blessed, just the seventh day. Right? If you look at the story of creation, no other day was blessed, just the seventh day. The seventh day alone was honored with God's blessings. And secondly, God sanctified the seventh day. The word sanctified means to set apart. The word sanctified means to make holy. That means God actually consecrated the day and declared it holy. Now this is very significant. It means that the seventh day was being set apart as a permanent day. It means the seventh day was to have pre, uh, 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 sorry, the seventh day was to have permanence that the other six days did not have. Any kind of work could be done on the other six days, but not on the seventh day. The work done on the seventh day was to be the same week by week. It was to be a day set apart for a very special purpose. The seventh day was to be a day different from the other six days. It is supposed to be a day that was to never pass away. A day that was to be given over to the work of holiness. I want you to note a clear fact. The seventh day is consecrated. The seventh day is declared holy by God. And the very fact that God himself does this means that the day is consecrated, the day is holy. No matter how much man abuses the day of rest and worship, it is still consecrated, it is still holy to God and his true believers. What an indictment against man. How desperately we need to quit abusing the day of rest 
and the day of worship. Many rest, but few give the day over to holiness. The third point is this. God rested and worshipped on the seventh day. No doubt all the heavenly hosts rejoiced with God as he celebrated his glorious work of creation. The heavenly host, all the angels, the seraphims, the cherubims of God were bound to be praising. They were blessing God for his marvelous works. Remember, God is the sovereign creator. He is the supreme intelligence and power. He is the Lord and majesty of the universe. God is worthy of all glory and majesty, all dominion and power, all praise and thanksgiving, all worship and honor. The first seventh day, the great day of God's rest, must have been one of the most glorious days of worship ever experienced in all eternity. The next point I want to make is this. God set the day apart as a day of celebration. God sanctified and he made this day holy. He set it apart as a very special day and as a permanent day. Now I want you to take note. The day was not set apart for God. It was set apart for men. Because God does not need a permanent day of rest. To say or to think so would be foolish. The day of rest and holiness is set apart for man. Man needs the day for two specific purposes. Two purposes. Firstly, man needs a day when lie, when lie can rest, both physically and, spirit, and spiritually. Man needs a day when he can experience a quiet peace and sense of accomplishment over his work of the past week. Man needs a day for worship and blessings, for praise and thanksgiving. Man needs a day that is set apart for him to concentrate upon God. Man, man's attention span is short and the focus of his emotions does not last very long. Therefore, man needs one day out of every seven when he can focus his attention and his emotions upon God. One day when he can concentrate upon God without major distractions. Man needs one day a week to worship God. To worship by praising God as the creator of the universe. To worship by thanking God for life the privilege and provision of life to worship by acknowledging God as the Lord and majesty of the universe to worship by blessing God for the privilege of work and health throughout the week to worship by serving God in the spirit of holiness and righteousness to worship by asking God to meet his needs and the needs of others just imagine how God will bless the person who observed the day of rest and worship as he intends it to be observed. Observe the day of rest and worship as how God intends it to be observed. Isaiah 56 verse 2 says, Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, that keepeth his hands from doing any evil. In Psalm 84 verse 4 it says, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah. Psalm 84 verse 4 says, Blessed are, uh, uh, sorry, Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Man is to faithfully observe and keep the Shabbat day. In Exodus 20 verse 8, the word of God says, Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. In Exodus 34 verse 21 says, Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In caring time and in harvest thou shalt rest. 
Whatever the reason, thou shall rest. That's the command. And I come to our final point. Not final point, the, a few, the last few points. But an important point. Because we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday today. Some of you have just joined us. You might be asking, why am I talking about the rest? Now, I want you to also note that there is a difference between the Shabbat as observed by the Jews and others and Sunday as observed by Christian believers. There's a difference. The Shabbat is the last day of the week. It was a day when Jesus the Messiah was in the tomb. A day of great sadness for the true Christian believer. However, Sunday is the first day of the week. It is a day of great joy, for it was the day of Jesus' resurrection. The day that he triumphed over death. It is called the Lord's Day, and is celebrated as a day of rest, a day of joy, a glorious day for searching the soul and meditating upon God. It is the day of worship and Christian fellowship celebrated by faithful believers worldwide. Right? Now, it was the custom of Jesus to worship on the Sabbath. We find this in Luke 4.16. It was Paul's custom, the Apostle Paul, it was his custom to worship on Sunday. Acts 17 verse 2. The Bible says God's people are not to neglect worship. Hebrews 10, 25. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, 31, verse 14, 34, verse 21. God's people are to remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. In Isaiah 56, verse 2, God's people are promised a special blessing for keeping the Shabbat day holy. Again, in Exodus 20, verse uh, 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 13, 22, Exodus 22, verse 8 and 15. We see that polluting the Shabbat will bring the judgment of God upon a people. Buying and selling are not to take place on the Shabbat. Nehemiah 10, verse 31. Helping the needy is lawful on the Shabbat. Helping the needy is lawful. Matthew 12, verse 12. John 7 verse 23 tells us that. Early believers worship on the day that Christ arose from the dead. That is on Sunday, the first day of the week. Acts 20 verse 7, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2. Today, we worship the Christ. Right? The Lord of the Shabbat. He is the Lord of rest. As faithful believers, we are to rest in Christ every second, every minute, every hour, every day, seven days a week. Our Shabbat is every day worshipping and thanking God in spirit and truth. And obviously, Sunday, of course, we come together as a household. We come together as a family of God to worship Him. Now, as I said, today, as New Covenant believers, our Shabbat is different. Jesus is the Lord of the Shabbat. And sometimes, because of, of state laws, because of, of, of uh, 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 work, and, and, and so on and so forth. You know, in Malaysia, we've got some states that work during the weekends. They, they practice a different weekend. So instead of having the weekends on Saturday, Sunday, it is Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday. Now, so they can't meet on Sunday mornings because it's a working day. But remember, Jesus is the Lord of the Shabbat. And as New Testament, when we say Shabbat, that means we are resting in the Lord seven days a week. And that's why many churches all over the world pick a day in the week. The idea is to pick a day to come together to worship the Lord and to praise Him and to thank Him.
to rest in him the story of the resurrection will not have an impact in your life if you do not know how to rest in the lord if you do not separate the day then it is going to be difficult for you to experience the resurrected lord you know many people stay away from church they have got a lot of excuses they are busy they cannot see the importance of coming together because god has already ordained this day god had already sanctified it and blessed it and made it holy yet people have are busy yet people are they have got preferences the pillow is more important buying fish from the market is more important cooking for the family is more important now i'm not saying all this is not important the pillow is important when i say pillow i hope you understand i'm talking about physical sleep on a sunday morning i'm not saying that you can't sleep but please set time for jesus set time to worship the lord going to the market is more important than worshiping the lord where are our priorities as new covenant believers new covenant believers we need that we need to remember these things Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us of the importance of keeping the seventh day, the day of rest, aside for you. We we ask you, Lord, to to forgive us whenever we have fallen short in coming to a place of rest. And we pray Lord that you give us the strength to continue even as we celebrate your resurrection this morning that we will come to a place where we will be reminded constantly by the Holy Spirit that our spirit man will be stirred to come to a place of rest with you to separate ourselves because you have separated us lord father we glorify your name today we honor you in jesus name we pray amen, amen. pastor yeah. maria has got something that she wants to share so i'm just going to give uh, give her some time to share this thing and before we, we we go on to the next section of our program now we have come to the fourth month of this year it's a new year 2021 and we have come to the fourth month and um, I feel that uh, you know God's been speaking what we ought to be doing for this month the month of uh, uh, April right you know the Bible says uh, in Psalms 104 verses 4 right the psalmist says he makes his messengers winds his ministers a flaming fire right god is speaking about fire in this month and this is what i've been having a prompting from the holy spirit that the month of april is a month where every believer needs to rise up in their prayer life take authority over those things that are not from god especially in their own lives and also in the lives of family members who are not in the Lord, right? Because the word of God says that our God is a consuming fire. Now we must understand what fire means. Fire burns many things. Fire burns the dross. You know, they want to cause gold to become pure. 
the goldsmith has to put the the fire i mean the gold into the fire then he allows it to get a bit burnt then he brings it out and then he begins to you know he begins to uh, wipe away the dross so fire actually is a work of purification and i and, and i believe that god is speaking to us for this month that we ought to set aside time to pray we have to set aside time to go before the lord and especially to set aside time to seek the holy spirit because in luke 3:16 right the bible says you know john answered them all saying i baptize you with water but he who is mightier than i is coming the strap of whose sandals i am not worthy to untie he will baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire so for those of you who have never experienced the holy spirit for those of you who have not gotten the baptism by fire i want you to understand that god is asking you to seek after him this month you know god cannot give something that is expensive god cannot provide something that is so precious to those who are not going to value it the the you know the power of the resurrection cannot be compared to the riches of this world you cannot buy you cannot buy the baptism of the holy spirit with money let me assure you with that it is a precious commodity of the lord if you want to receive baptism of the fire of the holy spirit and fire this month you have to put aside everything else and begin to flow in it going after the lord with all sincerity of heart with all sincerity of your spirit so that you can experience the fire the baptism of the fire that will set you apart from everyone else you know we are connected to heaven by the baptism of the holy spirit and of fire if you want to be an effective christian you want to see the salvation of your family you want to see the salvation of your relatives this is the time for you to embark on uh, you know that, that, that uphill journey with the lord and i want to encourage you i want to encourage you that it is possible it is all things are possible to those who love god and who are called by god all things god will never withhold his fire he will never withhold the baptism of the spirit from you as long as you want it with all your heart as long as you want to receive it god will see the you know he will see that which is in your heart and he will give it to you because it is the utmost desire of your heart if you want to receive it run after the lord if you don't want to receive it then you have to sleep and slumber and do every other thing you got to make that choice this month you got to work because it is still day when the night comes we will have to stop working so i want to encourage you this month go before the lord seek the lord while he may be found and then you will begin to see the salvation of your family members you will begin to see how god leads you by his spirit and not by your own flesh you cannot achieve anything by your own might and by your own power the bible says it is only by the power of the holy spirit amen 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 okay for our friends on facebook we wish you a blessed resurrection sunday, sunday. right and we will see you all next week but for our zoom our people on zoom we will go on to the next uh, 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 session so please thank you very much god bless you all